If you're like me, this image doesn't cause you to break out into a cold sweat. Back in the early 90s, these letters were commonplace and most computer users knew how to work with it out of necessity. This is the command prompt and even the most recent version of Windows has one for when things really go haywire. Experienced users of DOS and DOSBox will be able to mount their drives on startup through the auto exec option in the configuration text file and then start typing away using all kinds of commands. But for some people what I just said is like a foreign language. For those of you who aren't experienced with command line interfaces and have only used graphical user interfaces, the text only nature of DOSBox can often seem like a major barrier when compared to other emulators. Fortunately, help is at hand with DOSBox GUIs, which are more commonly known as front ends. Today I'll be showcasing the pros and cons of various front ends designed for DOS, so that you can make an informed choice as to which, if any, is for you. For a certain subsection of users, the command line is not only the most natural way of doing things, but also part of the nostalgic process. First off though, a shout out to Defend Reloaded which was an excellent and influential DOS front-end that has sadly been abandoned for years now. It, alongside with some other front-ends that haven't received recent updates or lead to dead links, won't be mentioned in this list. We'll be focused on a selection of front-ends that are still supported, so let's begin. DOSBox Game Launcher is the first of our front-ends that continues to be updated. It's an open source Java based launcher with a simple and uncluttered style. It supports multiple operating systems and can also use multiple versions of DOSBox, including the SVN builds discussed in my previous video. The interface and all the various options within make sense and you can scrape metadata for your games from multiple sites, though you'll need to enable retrieval of cover images and screenshots for all the pretty images. All the necessary elements of DOSBox configuration are presented in a sensible manner, and there's even support for importing Defend Reloaded profiles, setting DOSBox Game Launcher up as an obvious replacement. It might lack the polish of other launchers, but this is a one-man effort, so massive props to Ronald Blankendahl, and additional kudos to him for referencing pixel amusement on site for years now. Aside from the no-nonsense interface that many users prefer to slick presentation, the one issue I had with DBGL is that it's Java based, and you might hit some issues loading it with the proprietary Java runtime environment, depending on what operating system you're using. Aside from that, it's the most popular DOS specific game launcher for a reason. Check it out if you're a functionality over form person and don't need a fancy skin with your front end. Amp Shell is a Windows only .NET front end which takes the path of least resistance. It's like a miniature desktop for all your DOS games with icons that you double click. It has custom tabs for different game genres and actively encourages you to import your own configuration files. While it's not as fully featured as DBGL, it succeeds at what it's clearly aiming to be. A simple and less expansive GUI for those more interested in gaming than staring at beautiful box art in a cover flow style environment. For those who love staring at beautiful box art in a cover flow style environment, there's Boxer, a Mac exclusive front end. Unfortunately, I don't have an Apple machine, but I happen to know someone who does. What's that? She's busy? Oh, never mind then. Mac users, Boxer is your best choice due to its simplicity and seamless integration with the rest of your OS. And if for some reason you don't like it, then DBGL also runs on Mac. If you're feeling left out on the PC side, you can always try GR Lida, a Spanish language front end with picture flow. Fortunately, it has an English installer and the option to set English as the, excuse me? English United States? Unusable. It also supports ScumVM and VDM Sound if you have them installed. VDM Sound. Now that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. In addition to this, it can import DOSBox game launcher profiles and it has a nifty shortcut system to filter your games list. The wizard used to add games can either run the installer if they're not pre-installed or locate and configure the DOS games through a series of well-made windows. While the GR Lida site has been around for over a decade, it's early days for this front end, but it's a nifty option for people wanting a prettier launcher for their games. Just look at that nice wooden shelf. 
makes me want to play TIE Fighter all over again. IA Launcher stands for Internet Archive Launcher, and it serves as a front end for the Internet Archive MS-DOS Games Collection. But first you should totally look at the website that was designed for it. Now that's the internet I remember. It comes with preloaded metadata and can download games on the fly from archive.org. A completely different proposition compared to supplying your own. Unfortunately, if you're one of those people who doesn't install things in the default directory, then you'll have to make a copy of DOSBox in the Program Files folder. Yap Joris Vens is the sole creator, and it's more of a hobby project for him, and it shows. As the front end boots up into full screen each time and scans the folder for new games each time. For some bizarre reason it decided to play 1000 Migla, the first game by default. I skipped the scanning and was able to navigate the menu, but instead of looking as advertised each entry took up the full screen, with limited configuration options as you navigated using the arrow keys. Maybe it'll work better for you and something was screwy with my configuration, but at the time of writing this is just a nice concept. Now we come to the proverbial elephant in the room, Launchbox. Launchbox is a freemium games launcher that isn't specifically for DOS, so why should I include it? Well that's what Launchbox originally was, an attractive front end for DOS games and an alternative to the likes of Defend Reloaded. Sure, it can run almost anything now, but if you're only interested in DOS gaming specifically, this will still work just fine. Because it has a commercial element to it, with its attractive big box setting for TV gaming, there's extra incentive for its creator, Unbroken Software, to deliver the most polished product possible. Furthermore, I use Launchbox over every other potential launcher. You can't get much more of an endorsement than that, right? One of the reasons we don't hear more about DOSBox frontends is because DOSBox Game Launcher and Launchbox have pretty much covered the market, and general emulator frontends have also extended their own capabilities to include DOS emulation. Metropolis Launcher is one such creation, not designed exclusively for DOS, but more than capable of accommodating those titles in the same manner as other more focused frontends do. It's a hefty beast because it also ships with Moby Games metadata. It also allows exporting onto period specific hardware thanks to Total DOS Launcher, which is a nice touch. It's not going to offer you anything that the likes of a more focused DOSBox game launcher or launchbox do, but it's exceptionally good at handling large collections across multiple systems. There are all kinds of other more generalised emulation frontends like RetroArch, Hyperspin and Attract Mode, and DOS does have some degree of support among them, but it's not been until very recently that this has become a serious proposition. DOSBox Pure is built specifically for the LibRetro API that is used by the likes of RetroArch and Recalbox, and looks to bring the simplicity of console emulation to the wild west that is DOS in its many configurations. It only came out last month and is very much for public testing purposes at this point, but you can expect a more extensive video from yours truly on it soon. Once you've figured out your LibRetro frontend, you install it as an emulation core, and from there you can install various DOS games in zipped format. Some titles will suit this system better than others, platformers especially, but it's a very promising beginning, and heaps of praise should be thrown at Bernhardt Schelling for making it a reality. Then of course there's the commercial route, and two launchers in particular that stand out. GOG.com, while not specifically being about good old games anymore, has brought out a launcher of her own, which, again, isn't about old games. There are plenty of old games that are available for GOG, and can have their settings tweaked to some degree in Launcher. For those who want to part with their money to support whoever owns the rights to the game now. Some of that spending might even find its way back to the original creators, you never know. And if you really want to hit a button to play and don't like configuration, there are now plenty of DOS games on Steam automatically running on DOSBox, ScumVM, or even featuring proprietary source ports of their own. Good luck getting it working perfectly if it's not doing so out of the box though. You'll have to start editing text files and renaming executables, defeating the purpose entirely. Linux users of Steam should check out Boxtron from the creator of DOSBox Staging, which helps Valve's Proton to play non-native Steam titles in their native DOSBox, 
instead of using a compatibility layer over Windows DOSBox that can lead to input lag and other performance issues. A really neat idea, and one that I applaud the ingenuity of. While everything I just listed is awesome, I'd say that if I had to choose, Boxer is the go-to for Mac users, DOSBox Game Launcher is the best multi-platform release, and LaunchBox is still the best Windows-only front-end. DOSBox Pure looks like an intriguing couch gamer option for the future too. So in my next video I'll be looking at DOSBox Pure, and seeing if running DOS titles in zip folders like their ROMs is a far-fetched concept or a fast-approaching reality.